to Mwah, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. I am Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, we are here today for season one, episode 11. King of the Ant Hill. King of the Ant Hill. Uh, this one uh, shows off Hank's love for his for his yard. Yep. And uh, kind of taps into that whole Texas, I'm proud of my yard. I'm the best thing in the on the block kind of thing. Keep Keep lawns beautiful, all that stuff. And oddly enough, this episode debuted on your birthday. Really? Yes, May 4th, 1997. Wow. Well, there you go. There you go. I think that uh, that's proven that it's that it's great. I don't know. Um, so, uh, opening. No, uh, no pre-open, no anything like that. We go straight into the credits. Um, no bell, no yell. I don't believe. Not in here any bell. No bell, yell, no, no yell. yell. So we get in there, and uh, first thing we see is uh, Hank is out on his riding lawnmower, the same one that ran into his truck. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we find out that Hank is uh, really obsessed with his lawn. Scientific. Yeah, no kidding, right? Uh, Because he starts measuring the grass as he cuts it on either side of the mower. Yeah. Uh, One side is two and an eighth, and the other side is two and a sixteenth. And so he needs to let a little air out of one of the tires. Yeah, you gotta, so yeah he lower the lower up. the ride height on there. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and that's pretty specific. I mean, that's well. I mean, it, the lever only does so much. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. if you, I guess, if you got a little too much air in one tire or not enough I, in the other, I guess you're a little lifted on one side. Yeah, I, it's I a, it's an eighth of an inch though, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. All right. So to uh, have the best lawn in Arlen <laughs> in or Arlen. Texas, that's you know, right. you gotta. So we get Bill. We get Bill wandering up, and uh, he's asking Hank if he's getting his lawn ready for Cinco de Mayo. And then he tells him, uh, "My lawn is in a constant (laughs) state of readiness." Yeah, yeah. The block party is just an opportunity to uh, uh, roll her out and see what she can do. Yeah, which I don't know what that means with with grass, but sure. Uh, Then we get Con uh, rolling up with Doggy. Uh, He's out for a walk. This is. I guess this is the second episode. Yeah, with Con. I think, I think it's the second one that's got Con in it. Okay. Yeah, uh, but he he says, "Well, Hank, if you're going to let your lawn go to hell, can I just let Doggy go? Doggy on make it? on yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and Hank uh, does not take that well. Nope. Uh, you don't like it. If you got something to say, just say it. And Con says, "Well, I don't want to be the one to point out the low density patches over there. So let me tell you about my yard, Rusty. Okay." Oh, you're a lawn guy. No, I'm not a lawn guy. Okay. And no. by this story, you will be able to tell that. Um, I hate mowing the yard. I've oh, always yeah. hated it. I uh, used to break the mower on purpose at my dad's house because that way you couldn't mow. Yeah, you can't mow uh, with a broken mower. The thing is, he would go out and fix it, and then I would have to mow. So, uh, but my yard at my house uh, is in an area that is besieged with uh, construction. So they're building all these different houses and all these different developments and stuff out there where I'm at. And uh, the runoff has caused half of my front yard to die. Oh, wow. Drowned it out. It drowns it out. Yeah. It's uh, so basically if you look at my front yard, you go up about halfway uh, and then it's just dirt. The rest of the way that's up. It. Yeah, that's right. It's just dirt the rest of the way up. So I am not a lawn guy. Not I, a uh, lawn guy. Okay. Uh, so if anybody out there wants to roll some new uh, sod out at my place, I will I will get out of your way and let you. 
Uh, so Dale shows up and uh, Dale is like, listen here, Con, if anybody's bringing down property values, it's me. Yeah, it's, it's not me. you. Yeah. That's right. Uh, My he, law is nothing but ragweed and auto parts. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I love that quote. Ragweed and auto parts. Um, and then Con, of course, no, 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 my yard's better, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Bill uh, is kind of helping Hank, uh, you know, don't worry, you know, we might be able to tell that Con's lawn's better, but, you know, those other people block party, they won't. They'll, they'll be they'll, drunk. They'll be drunk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and then here we go. We got another problem uh, where Hank has to eat feelings again. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he goes, damn, I poured my whole life into this lawn. My heart, my soul, <laughs> the tender feelings I've held back from my family. <laughs> held back from my family, yeah. And then, he's, and then he grabs two different pieces of soil, one from his and then one yeah. from Khan's, and he looks he's, at them, and then he goes to switch them. He goes em. to switch them. And yeah. uh, Bill, Bill tells him, uh, go ahead. He, he said, you don't want to win that way. Yeah, you don't want to win that way. Just switch those back and go in and hug your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, now we go inside and we've got Peggy on the phone uh, with her impeccable Spanish. Oh, it's really funny here. Yeah. She's uh, Bethany. It does not matter if your acicados are hard. <laughs> Life is hard. Yeah. You cannot make authentic guacamole out of lima beans and Ritz crackers. Yeah. <laughs> and then she says, oh, these people, gringos. Like she's not a gringo. These gringos. Yeah, uh, Lou Ann is very happy that uh, Peggy is in charge of the block party for Cinco de Mayo yep. uh, because last year it was more All tex, tex and no mix. That's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hank is still fixated on the lawn thing. He uh, he doesn't know why everybody's so gaga over Con's lawn. Um, the man grows with grain for yeah, God's sake. Yeah, he mows with the grain. He mows with the grain. That's right. Uh, and I love Peggy's like Peggy is just like fed up with it at this point. She's just like, Oh yeah, he's a devil. He's and then the she devil. just keeps talking about whatever yeah. she's talking about. Yeah. Uh, she wants Hank to let Boomhauer know that Swiss cheese is not Mexican. It is, it is American, American. And she wants him to bring, bring some, some Monterey, Monterey Jack. Jack. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He is, uh, he's, he's very concerned about his lawn. He's the block captain and he wants to have the best lawn for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, but look at her. She's like a pretty girl with With short short hair. hair. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and so, uh, now we're back outside and, uh, the boys are all standing around and here comes, uh, Dale. He's asking Hank if he can go ahead and spray his lawn again. Um, Hank is, is kind of down with this plan um he uh, we find out that he's been letting dale spray his yard twice a week oh wow number one which is a lot of spray that's a lot of spray uh, killing his yard and then dale he launches into this thing about how he lost another client uh because they say he uses too many chemicals well, I say Sarah Lee uses more chemicals than I do. Oh, uh, and this part right here, he goes, he goes, I need, I need to make up the income. That's the part. I'll yeah. do it for free. <laughs> That's yeah. what I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I need to make up the income. I'll do it for free. Uh, so he goes and grabs his stuff, uh, and then Peggy's like, well, maybe that's what's wrong with your yard. Maybe Dale's spraying too much poison on it. Hank, uh, a, a good God-fearing American, believes that petrochemicals are the future and, oh, yeah, and the way you do everything. And so, uh, no, he's always sprayed his yard. Uh, and, he, and we find out that he pays him $2 a week. $2 a week. If $2 I can give some week. business to my friend and keep my lawn bug free, That's it's right. worth $2 a week. $2 a week. Um, and uh, so then uh, Dale is back and he's got all his stuff and he's ready to spray. Turn your cuffs down, boys, and make sure you're zipped. And then he starts spraying. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want any dangles, I guess, while you're, uh, while you're spraying petrol. No, you definitely your don't. Yard. Uh, and, and he's ready to spray. Hank then starts, it starts eating at him. What Peggy's saying about, uh, maybe it's the chemicals. Yeah. And so he says, Dale, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take a rain check. And Dale is, uh, Dale's upset because he was going to spray for fire ants. Yeah. He was already. And then, uh, he says, I'll give it a pass or whatever. Then Dale looks back and points at his, uh, Points at the Bugabago and mm-hmm. says, "You risk getting a queen. Look at her; she can lay a million eggs in a twenty-four hour time period." And then uh, one of my favorites is Bill. Wow, that's more than a human woman does in a lifetime. Yeah, Bill, <laughs> twenty-four million eggs. Yeah, old Bill. Yeah, and so uh, uh, Dale also tells us that uh, that's how they killed L. Ron Hubbard is with fire ants. Yeah, with fire ants, uh, which I'm not sure is true. Uh, and Hank has to, has to correct him with, uh, telling him how, uh, and, and I believe this is true that fire ants don't all sting at once. Some of them bite, some of them sting out of defense and things like that. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, Dale's like, well, that's not true. And then the boys start backing him up, especially Boomhauer. Yeah, absolutely. He, yeah, he's like, I don't know, man. Hank's man. He knows. Dang old Hank's man. And Dang so Hank's the man. We see the we see the dynamic there that Hank is definitely the authority figure out of all four of them, even though. It's it's always crazy to me because he, even though Boomhauer we find out is like a state trooper yeah, at some, yeah, some point kind of he's never the officer. he's never the authority no he's never yeah oh and then it's funny too here because uh, he says Hank is more believable I side with him mm-hmm. and then uh, he goes on about his professional career he goes what are you guys listening to Hank for I've dedicated my <laughs> professional career to the study and control of arthropods. I have personally taste tested taste each and every tested. household insecticide. <laughs> taste tested. I have read a book. I have read a book. Hank's more believable. Yeah. 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 But the funny thing about Dale is that like Dale is almost like immortal. Mm-hmm. It seems like. Yeah. Sometimes. And I watched this video as far as on the YouTube. chemicals and stuff goes. Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and he I, never wears a mask. Never, never wears a mask. Yeah, yeah. Always smoking a cigarette. And yeah. it always has like a flammable sticker. But there was a video <laughs> I watched on YouTube. And uh, the video talked about the different power levels of each character. And yeah. they break each character down. And all it does is talk about the strengths of each character. And it's, you know, almost like comic book like how they approach it. So, really? like, they, uh, I have to send them to you. Yeah. But the one I particularly watched was about Dale. And the whole time it's talking about why Dale is almost an immortal figure and like, like yeah. how crazy and yeah. like there was one point where in the episode, uh, previous episode where we talked about uh, how he said, uh, I almost reached Zen. And uh, <laughs> the guy goes, well, Buddhists spend their entire life trying to reach this, you know, inner peace. And Dale was able to achieve it in just such a short time with all of the problems of the world still on him kind of thing. It was a really good video. It's really yeah. funny. Yeah, I'd love to watch that. So we get into uh, this thing where um, they kind of argue back and forth because Hank has decided he doesn't want he doesn't want chemicals yeah, sprayed on his doesn't. yard anymore, and Dale is pleading his case. You know, uh, he's uh, Dale's like I was I'm your exterminator. Hank's like you were my exterminator. Now we're just friends. Yeah. He says he takes him aside and says Hank, please don't do this in front of everybody. And then he pretends to spray Hank's lawn anyway and tells him to keep the dog in the house for an hour. <laughs> yeah, he's just over there going, okay, I'm done. Yeah, but you missed you missed a good joke there. So he goes, you got another exterminator? Is he? licensed is he bonded is that it do you want someone who's licensed and bonded (laughs) (laughs) absolutely yeah because you think he's asking if you want those things and then he's like uh do i need those things uh so now uh uh, hank and peggy are taking a trip to home depot lowe's whatever it may be right yeah uh and um they're looking around hank is uh eyeballing a hoe uh, and it's the funniest thing because I can remember my dad and my grandfather doing the same kind of thing with like two by fours and stuff. You know, you pick it up and you stare down the end of it yeah. to see if it's straight or yeah, if it's yeah, warped yeah. or whatever. And he asked Peggy, he says, does this, does this say Hank Hill? That's what <laughs> like, like, like a hoe is going to represent him. And, uh, the, the, the goofy throwaway joke is Peggy just saying, you know, why are men so attracted, attracted to hoes? <laughs> <laughs> And then comes the moment. Uh, Hank mm-hmm. spots the grass. It's Rally St. Augustine. St. Augustine. To hell with the fertilizer and seed. He just wants to roll out this sod, right? It's a dollar twenty-five a square foot. Dollar twenty-five a square foot. Which, which, to be honest with you, right now I'd pay that to to fill up my dirt hole. Yeah. Um, that's what I got in trouble for in school is filling up my dirt hole. Uh, so. Um, <laughs> Uh, Hank launches into how this lawn really represents him, Texas, America, yeah, everything. Yeah, he said that uh, some people hoist a flag. He said, my lawn is my flag. Right. Tells right. the world, here lives a competent, trustworthy salesman of propane and <laughs> propane accessories. And then he, he says, without it, I'm just Bill. Yeah, with, you want to be married, married to, to Bill? Bill? <laughs> That's right. And then she shudders. She just yeah. shudders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She gives a bah. And so next we pick up, Hank has installed the Rally St. Augustine. And uh, Peggy is like, you know, mister, you just installed the finest lawn in the block. And Hank's, Peggy, I didn't do it for me. I did it for Arlen. He installed a yard and he thinks of it as like he did it for his country. He did it for his state. He did it for his city. He did it for everybody. Not for him. No, he didn't do it for him. Okay, here's one of the things that bugs me, okay? 
and and normally I let well no I don't normally I let things go. Um, but Luann then decides she's going to start rolling in the grass. I don't like how she rolls one way and then rolls back the other way because it's just rewinding the same animation. You can tell whenever she rolls. Oh yeah, they yeah. Just, they're there's just, like yeah, this second. It's like a teeter totter. Yeah, she yeah, just goes yeah, right yeah, back. Yeah. I mean, it's stupid. It's no big deal. But yeah, she's she's Not rolling. Talking about, yeah. She's rolling around in the yard, and she thinks it feels so good. You know, uh, Hank's like, "Yeah, it's a lawn. It's meant to be enjoyed." But when she does get up, he sprays it down with the water hose because she'd been laying in it. Yeah. Uh, and then you find out that uh, she just wants to roll in the grass because she's over in Con's lawn rolling around. Yeah, she starts <laughs> rolling his yard. Yeah. Yeah, he's yelling. He comes about running it. out. Yeah. Uh, so. Dale congratulates him on uh, on on the new yard. Says it feels like shag carpet with dirt. Uh, and uh, what we don't realize is that Dale is at that time releasing fire ants into this new yep. yard. Yes, he is. Um, I like how they're all coming down the leg of his pants, and then he goes, "Ouch!" Like, yeah, he got <laughs> bit. Yeah, he definitely them, got bit. Yeah, one of them bit him while he did it. Uh, so. Uh, next thing we see is uh, Khan is uh, pissed off because uh, somebody stole his TV guide out of his mailbox. He said, is it Bill? Oh, no, wait, Bill can't read. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Bill can't read. <laughs> and then uh, Hank's out in his yard. He's got no shoes on. He's feeling out the yard, and he's like, oh, Khan, I'm just out here, you know, letting my feet air out. And uh, Khan's like, yeah, oh, he'll Billy barefoot. barefoot. Big, big surprise. Big surprise. <laughs> uh, so he just keeps walking around on what he's calling his lush, super plush new lawn. Uh, and Khan is like, oh, yeah, yeah, I see. It's Rally St. Augustine. Very expensive. You know, uh, he's like, oh, yeah, it's best lawn in Ireland all that. Um, and Khan is pissed off because he's like, you know, Khan has to have the best of everything. Yeah, he has to have everything the best and for so sure. So he's like, yeah, 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 all right, you win, best lawn tomorrow. Maybe we compare, compare salaries. salaries. And then yeah. he goes inside and he says, Khan Jr., get the fertilizer, men, get my tax return. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Hank then looks down, he sees a hose in the yard, and he's like, oh, I don't want to get a hose imprint. Picks it up and he's about to roll it up and finds a fire ant on his new yard. Yep, gets stung by it. Yeah, um, I don't know what your relationship to fire ants is, um, but here in Texas, they're a big deal. Yeah, they are. I mean, they pop up almost instantly. Yeah, especially bad. after it rains. Yeah, oh my lord! Yeah, and my my dirt pile has lots of them. Uh, so. Uh, we, I could certainly relate to this whole fire ant thing. Yeah, I can too. I remember, fire ants suck. uh, I buy this ortho stuff that comes in a, a plastic mm -hmm. bottle and it smells like rotten eggs, but you go out there and you just a little bit and boy, they're gone. Gone. I mean, it kills them. I, I'm sure that I'm draining life out of the planet for future generations, but, uh, boy, those fire those ants are fire gone. Those fire ants are gone. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So, um... Next, we see Hank and Peggy. They are using a new fire ant system. It's They're called gonna, Eco Kill. That's right, and it's called Eco Kill because it's like ecologically safe. It's ecologically yeah, yeah, safe. Yeah. The government wouldn't let you use the word eco <laughs> right. unless it was ecologically right. safe. Uh, Hank's not so sure, you know, because it comes with a bag of flies. Yeah, which I don't know how you ship that and not have a bunch of dead flies. But yeah, I'm that's not sure, yeah. whatever. Well, they do uh, for because uh, I grow a garden, yeah. and you could buy. Uh, ladybugs online for aphids. oh yeah sure sure it's kind of weird how they send them yeah. but they yeah they ship them to you and everything well you know um i think you can buy a lot of i uh that other podcast that i do about comic books we were reading some of the ads from the back bros of the for comic hose. books yeah bro <laughs> <laughs> bros, bros and heroes yeah, bros, um and, heroes. and uh, y'all check that one out too there was there's a bunch of ads in there for like uh, f uh, send away for your live mouse or, you know, your, your live turtle or whatever. Yeah, I just yeah, can't yeah. imagine how many animals died in the mail, you know, from, from <laughs> comic book kids. Their, yeah, comic know. book kids. I send in my animals. quarter. I want, a, I want a turtle. Well, imagine being on the other end of that. Like you're a yeah, you got a seven year turtles. old and you get it. No, I'm talking about you're a seven year old and a dead. You get a dead turtle oh, well, in the that's mail. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that experience is yeah, gonna I'm be sure traumatic. Were, I'm sure there were quite a few dead things that showed up at people's houses. Uh, so. 
Peggy's explaining this this eco kill uh, to uh, to Hank, and and what ends up happening is there's Ford flies in there. Those are the flies we're talking about. The Ford flies inject their eggs into the fire ant's head. Oh wow! And then the egg hatches into a maggot, which eats away at the ant's brain until the head falls off. Repeat, repeat is, is necessary. necessary. <laughs> <laughs> repeat is necessary. Okay. Uh, Hank says he likes it. And this is what those environmentalists should be spending their time on, finding uh, ways to use nature again, other forms of nature that are inconvenient to man. This is where we see leftist tendencies in Hank again. Sure. Yeah, ecologically sure. friendly. That's right. Um, now we go over to the side, and we've got Bobby and Joseph, and they're doing the classic. they got the uh, magnifying glass out, and they're looking at ants. Yeah. What they don't realize is they keep burning them up, right? Yeah. And I'm not sure why Bobby couldn't catch on to this because it kept happening. Uh, they're talking about the eco kill and <laughs> Joseph's just the creepiest little kid. Like he goes, yeah, we can collect the heads and play with them later. <laughs> yeah. Like ant heads <laughs> and heads. Yeah. Specifically. That's, that's weird. Very small thing to play with. Very small. Uh, and, and Bobby's like, Oh, what a terrible way to die. Oops. And he burns another one. <laughs> he just keeps burning these things. Uh, Joseph is uh, very excited about this stuff. Uh, Bobby says he loves the little chubby white one. Yeah, and then and then he goes. It reminds me of me before my growth spurt. And then uh, uh, I guess Joseph, being Dale's son, knows what what bugs look like. So he goes, "That's the queen, stupid. It looks just like the one of my dad's truck." And then this is funny right it here because Bo- this is the only yeah. time you ever hear yeah. Bobby say anything. Yeah. But there's a there's a little bit of trivia behind this too. So. Uh, in this episode, it seems like Dale knows that Joseph isn't uh, that Dale isn't Joseph's dad. Yeah. And uh, there's only in a later episode. I don't know exactly what episode it is, but Nancy starts listing off everybody that knows about her affair. Right. And then at the very end of it, she says, "And maybe Bobby." So yeah. they do eventually bring oh, that wow. back up yeah. uh, in the trivia or whatever. So he says, uh, "It looks like the one on my dad's truck," and Bobby says. You mean Del Gribble's truck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joseph's like, oh, yeah, my dad. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. Well, I try to fight all through the night, deep in the heart of Texas. The queen is cool. She lets out smells that make the other ants do with whatever she wants. Yeah. And this is where Bobby uh, has some issues. Uh, he starts gathering up the ants. Uh, and uh, he's going to take some inside and and keep them uh, safe and play with them and watch them and all that stuff. Yeah, whatever his intent is. Yeah. Uh, And then we've got um, um, Dale kind of rubbing it in Hank's face that uh, he's starting to get these anthills in his yard. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, And these are prominent anthills. They are a lot of anthills. I've seen a lot of... I've seen a lot of anthills, but I've never seen anthills that big. Well, this is in this is front yard. this is like one huge anthill, yeah. and Dale is like, ha ha ha, well, 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 looks like they played you like a damn fiddle, you know all that. And Hank, this is this is kind of unHank to me. He says, uh, "The Opry's not over." Okay, ants, put your heads between your six legs, kiss your butts goodbye. goodbye. Yeah. But all he's doing is running over it with his lawnmower. That's and, it. and I mean, that's going to spread it every single time. I mean, you go kick those anthills, you just get seven anthills. Yeah. You know? Uh, the old man used to pour diesel down them. Really? Yeah. I mean, that was the old technique. Did he set them on fire or no, just, just pour the gas? diesel yeah. or kerosene or something? Yeah. I think that was the old uh, the old country. Old uh, motor oil. Country like remedy. That. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that didn't do anything to the earth. Uh, all. all right. Next morning, Hank is uh, Hank's up. He's uh, going to get his paper out. I think this is... One of the funniest lines, uh, he comes out and he reads the headline and says, celebration of local graffiti artists. I'll give you a headline. Local man cancels newspaper Paper subscription. subscription. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny because it's like, that's what my dad and my grandfather would have said. Uh, then ca- uh, we, <laughs> we, we realize with Hank what's happening here. When Khan says, ha ha, you got a permit for all that construction? And you see Hank's yard, and it is just nothing but anthills at this yeah, point. Yeah, nothing but anthills. And so that's why I say it's so anti-Hank. You would think he would know that, that yeah. it's just going to spread all that stuff. I got a bit of trivia here, too. Yeah, please. So they say that uh, in this episode that the ants have destroyed the yard. Yeah. Is what the what they're thinking. So, right. but actually, ants don't really cause any damage to St. Augustine grass. So it would be a bug called the chinch bug, C H I N C H chinch chinch yeah, bug. Chinch sorry, bug, yeah. And they said that was the would more likely be the culprit because uh, 
you know, ants, they don't. Ants no, they just build hills. They just build hills. They just build hills and they build bigger hills. That's that's, that's all they do. And then of course they sting people, you know. Yeah. And, and 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 again, if you're listening from outside of Texas or whatever and you don't know what a fire ant is, just look them up. Um they're extremely painful. Uh they leave little blisters. I wonder if they're just in warmer climates. Well, that's what I'm wondering. I, I don't know. I don't know that's what either. I'm saying. I mean, if you're up north or something and you're listening to this, I'm not which, an antologist. Congratulations. But if you're listening to the an antologist, uh, <laughs> but if you're listening to this, uh, yeah, look up, uh, look up, uh, fire ants. They are, uh, they are a scourge. Uh, Not so fly. one of my favorite parts is, uh, we get Dooley yeah, for Dooley. some reason, Dooley walks up to Hank on his, at his front door and just goes, you got ants. And then, yeah. Well, it's the, uh, <laughs> it's like the, it's the whole neighborhood neighborhood. out yeah. there looking at it. Cause but, it's I mean, just destroyed. Dooley, Dooley is so brash. Dooley is so brash that he just walks right up to Hank's front door and just says it right to his face. Yeah, he does. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, All especially right. just being like some little shithead teenager in the a, neighborhood. He's just a punk. He's got like, you yeah. know, it's like the, that's the grunge era. He's like the little mm-hmm. grunge kid. He's got like the, yeah. he always has like the, the What's the funny to me kind of is he has a flannel is, on, but it's always like short sleeve. Yeah. Like, like he's almost grunge, but not really. Not grunge enough. You know? Yeah. You've got hands. He's just edgy. Yeah. He's, he's definitely edgy, especially for Arlen. Uh, he's not the Satan suck crowd, but, uh, but he's, he's getting there. Yeah. He's not, not far from it. Uh, so we go back in and we see Bobby and Bobby is now, um, uh, sniffing the ants and, uh, taking in the queen's scent and he is under the spell of the queen ant. Yes. My queen. Yes. Yeah. My queen. He's doing whatever, whatever the queen is asking him to do. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> we go back outside and now we've got, uh, the boys talking about the big Cinco de Mayo block party. Uh, Bill, uh, he's worried because he's only got half a tank of propane left and Peggy wants him to barbecue. Uh, he says, you know, maybe I can just top it off with some lighter fluid or something. Yeah. Hank has a fit. A huge like, fit. Oh you don't God. want to be mixing and matching your petrochemical. The That's propane right. associate recommends it. You, it'll be fine. And this is, this is the turn here when Dale says, it'll be fine, Bill. Burn is yeah. burn. And now burn all of burn. a sudden the boys are listening to Dale rather than listening to Hank. And Hank is, uh, Hank's a little put out. Yeah, yeah. He's a little yeah, put out. Yeah, he is. Uh, so he says, propane no. Propane is know what I know uh, best. Propane is what I know best. And then Dale's like, it sure ain't lawns. Yeah. Boom hour. Boom hour. Yeah, man, sure right about that, man. So uh, Hank takes Dale aside and says, uh, listen, guys, I got to talk to Dale alone. And da- Dale is over there holding court with the other two. Yeah, absolutely. He says, I was just telling the guys about Stonehenge. It seems the Druids used some kind of sophisticated celestial. Hank interrupts him. Interrupts him. him. Yeah. Dale, I didn't come here to. Oh, no, says Dale. You're going to listen to me for once. Calendar. Calendar. And that was (laughs) it. Celestial calendar. Now, what can I do for you? (laughs) <laughs> you can save my lawn. Yeah, he's back, and he uh, he wants him to get rid of the uh, get rid of the ants. Uh, he's the only one that can help him. Uh, Dale is going to milk this for all it's worth. He's Milking like, it. uh, that's right, I am the only one. Uh, why should I though? Well, I'll give you two dollars, and then Dale just laughs, you know. Um, and then Hank is like, well, because you're my friend. I'm Hank's friend. Just tie a ribbon tie around. Tie a ribbon around me. Does a little dance. <laughs> does yeah, a dance, yeah. yeah. And then Hank launches into this this heartfelt thing where he says, because I'm coming to you, man to man, offering a genuine apology for choosing my lawn over friendship. And then he tells him, geez, Hank, I was only <laughs> holding out for 250 That's right. Just waiting for 250 Um, So now Dale gets all his crap. And uh, he's going to start spraying for these ants. Uh, and he is spraying this big, I think it's pink cloud. Yeah, it's uh, of stuff. Dioxophilified 6000 with Tecro <laughs> line. <laughs> this is a little Dale laugh. And, and uh, uh, Hank is a little concerned because he thinks there's going to be bleaching yeah. on the yard. And, and Dale, of course, is like, oh, no, no. It's, it's totally safe or whatever, yeah. but I'd put that mask back on if I were you. And then he taps the tank. I got to pull out the big gun. That's all right. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, the radio announcers. Oh, the DJs in the background. Yeah, you yeah. can hear them. Yeah, and yeah. don't forget, it's Quattro de Mayo. That's right, brother. You know, yeah, that's right, you brother. Can, you can tell that it's Stephen Root doing the name, yeah, doing yeah. the voices, yeah, it's but him. it's still fantastic. Um, now's the next day. Hank comes out, and it's even worse. Gone. The lawn is just completely gone. 
yeah, it's just all dirt at this point. Yeah, there's no hills or anything. There's it's no just hills. The, there's no nothing. Everything is like dead. Yeah. And Peggy tries to make him feel better. You know, maybe you can get a new lawn by next year's Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Mayo. which is no way to make Hank feel better. You know, yeah. uh, he doesn't want to go through it again. He goes, from now on, it's wood chips and gravel. Well, and so, now you do not mean that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then boom, how our ashes to ashes, man. Dang old ashes to ashes. Dang old ashes to ashes. Yeah. Uh, Dale explains that he used uh, as much poison as necessary and not, not a 55, 55 gallon, gallon drum, drum more. more. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it makes me wonder how much he actually used. <laughs> yeah. And then old, uh, they, they start. Feeling bad for Hank, you know, because uh, poor Hank, well, serves him right. Damn straight. Yeah, it does. But, you know, Khan, uh, Khan uses it as a chance to really dig into Hank. He says that, you know, where he's from, they have a thing called karma. You do something uh, bad, and it'll come back and bite you in the ass. The big, white, white stubborn, stubborn ass. ass. Yeah. That's right. And he goes, guys, I can hear you. He's, <laughs> yeah. not, he's not even standing 20 he's not, feet from. He's not standing any, any far away. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, right he on can hear everything. Uh, Luann has a question for Peggy about the Cinco de Mayo Fest. Uh, she says that Buckley wants to bring his 38 to shoot which, off at the block party. Which the point of trivia was, would be that them, them two are dating again, even right. though they broke up. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Uncle Hank wants nothing more than a 22. And that's a real struggle for Luann. She's trying to figure yeah, out is. how she's going to let Buckley bring that 38. A 38 to shoot in the air for Cinco de Mayo. Um. Peggy uh, is in there making stuff for the big block party. Yep. And she realizes that she is completely out of sugar uh, because we find out that Bobby has a big mouthful of sugar and he's just like regurgitating it into the queen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really feeding, weird. Yeah. Feeding the queen. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, again, uh, a favorite of mine is when Nancy says, Oh, sugar, we're out of sugar. Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, sugar, sugar, so, sugar. So she tells uh, she tells Peggy that there's some more in the basement. Peggy is like, "Oh, I'll go down and get it." That's where Peggy finds the model house, the yard, the plans to attack yep. their house, the whole thing. Dale hasn't hidden anything. Honestly, yep. everything is sitting out. And then you've got a, another point of trivia here. So this scene here where she's in the basement, she sees all the ongoing plot to yep. destroy Hank's lawn or whatever. It kind of spoofs the ending of Sansa and the Lambs with uh, Buffalo Bill's night vision point of view of Clarice. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't even really think about that. Yeah, yeah you're right. It does. It looks a lot like it. Uh, so she runs into Dale. Uh, Dale is, is <laughs> she's like, what are you doing with all these fire ants? And Dale goes, they're silkworms. Yeah, they're she's silkworms. Like, uh-huh. If you keep your mouth shut, I'll, I'll make you a business suit. <laughs> I guess he's talking about out of the silk that the silkworms make, right? He's going to make her a business suit. Yeah. Uh, and so we go back to Bobby. Bobby is now communicating with the ants, uh, saying that he cannot uh, let them out of the... Safety of the bowl. Well, yeah. and it's not even like an actual bowl. It's a it's an old bubblegum machine is what it is. That's That's what they're in. Yeah. And he tells her this is too dangerous. And then he's like, oh, forgive me, my queen. I spoke out of turn. And so he takes the ants outside, and he's going to start dumping them back onto the hill. Back onto the hill, yeah. But this hill is in the alley. Yeah. And Bobby realizes that the ants are not up to any good here as he starts emptying them because they start coming for him. Yeah, they they pile up on him. Yeah, they start piling up on him. In the meantime, Dale and Hank are out there kind of fighting over this whole lawn thing. Uh, you know. Oh uh, yeah, you went too far this time. Yep. Come back here, and he's telling him, uh, "I'm going to kick it harder if you don't come over here. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to kick your ass." Yeah, and he's like, "You shouldn't have fired me. You know, I'm crazy of any. I'm I'm capable of any crazy, crazy thing. thing. Uh, but my yard, Dale. You know, you don't mess with a man's yard." All of this stuff. Oh, and then he tells them, he goes, I tried playing the ants in your driveway, but they couldn't, they didn't take, they couldn't bite through cement. <laughs> he says, they're weak yeah, like he's me. So dumb, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then Bobby is like, Dad and Hank's not now. Bobby in the middle of something because he's fighting. Bobby's like, this really can't wait. They turn around and Bobby is covered. And I mean, covered head in to fire toe. ants, head to this toe. This really can't wait. <laughs> yeah. It, it is, it is a problem at this point. And so. Dale says, don't move a muscle. 
if you move, they're going to sting you all at once. Take my hand, Bobby. They'll swarm on me. And he's like, How oh, you, yeah. what if they don't? He goes, they will. They've been trying to get to me. Yeah, he said they've been they've been waiting to get a piece of me for 15 years. That's Come right. and get it, boys. So this is funny. This is, and, then, uh, and then you also got get, a personal vendetta with the ants. But you get another one as they're climbing on him going, ouch. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he so just falls on the ground. Ends, yeah. And so Hank thinks uh, Dale is dead. Uh, yeah. because he's been, you sacrificed your love to save my son. I guess that makes us even. I for guess you that my makes lawn. us even. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, Oh, what am I talking about? Of course it makes us even. So if you ruin somebody's yard, as long as you get killed by ants for their child, then everything's good. It's good. Squared yeah, away. You're all squared away. But um, is it about the principal? Is it really about the yard? Um, I think it is with Hank. Yeah. It's about the yard. I think it's really about the there yard. There is no principle. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yard. I think if given a choice between Bobby and his yard, Hank would take a beat. He'd probably take Lady Bird. Yeah. If you uh, give a chance between too. Bobby or the lawn, he'd probably take Lady Bird. Yeah, that's true. If you give Hank a choice between anything and Lady Bird, I think he would choose Lady uh, Bird. Yeah, he does love Lady Bird. And that's funny. We don't see Lady Bird in this one at all. Nope. Uh, so uh, Dale finally wakes up. Uh, he he asked if anything was inserted, inserted into, into him while he was blacked <laughs> out. He goes, you're alive? He goes, answer the question. <laughs> but now we go to uh, the Cinco de Mayo block festival or block party that's going on outside. Hank is inside feeling sorry for himself. He's just rewinding golf videos and watching the green, watching the green, watching the green. It's on the forth. green. It's on yeah. the green. And then uh, here comes uh, Peggy. She's like, Hank, you need to come join the block party. How about at least one margarita before, before Bill, Bill finishes, finishes them the all? Ball. He goes, it's not margarita, it's margarita. Yeah. <laughs> and then the doorbell He's rings. Frust- that's another, that's where he gets frustrated with old Peggy yeah, again. Yeah. Doorbell rings and uh, Peggy's like, Hank, come quick. Uh, and now we get our um, our ending like uh, at the end of It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. Everybody in the uh, community there has brought Hank a little patch of grass, little piece of sod. little piece of sod, so he gets a full yard out of it, Yeah, which is kind of weird for it anything. Is, it is weird, but Imagine, again. like, you wake up, your lawn has been destroyed, and then two days later, all your friends in the neighborhood just bring you, <laughs> bring you grass. a square yeah. foot of grass to Here's cover grass. your yard. <laughs> but it's it's just like the end of uh, It's a Wonderful Life, and even Boomhauer comments on it. He goes, this day's Hanks, man. Everybody's best friend, man. Richest man in the world. Just like dang oh, old Jimmy. Jimmy yo. Yo. He, he can't remember Stuart. So uh, that is kind of how it ends. Uh, we get Hank with a real uh, heartfelt speech, and he talks about how much he um, he loves everybody. In, 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 well, loves strong. He goes, I like y'all a whole lot. Yeah. If any of you weren't here, I'd miss you some. <laughs> Especially <laughs> want to thank Dale Gribble. Right. Without his paranoid and, well, hateful nature, I would never would have learned what kind of a beating a friendship can take and survive. Uh, you're my best friend, Dale. Of course, Bill is like, I thought I was your best friend. And Hank just like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And well, he just never says anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. And then we get our credits. Yep. Uh, so everything is well on uh, Rainy Street again uh, in Arlen. Uh, during the credits, we have Hank out there mowing these few patches of grass that somebody that, it, yep, that the neighborhood gave him. And he is whistling um, Spanish Ladies. Oh, okay. I, I couldn't remember what song that was, and I thought it was uh, the one from Jaws. And I think he does. The Willie Nelson, Ray Charles? No. This oh, that's is, Seven Spanish Angels. Yeah, this is. That's what I'm thinking fair, of. The young lady. It's like a oh, okay, sea I shanty got you. Oh, thing. Oh, it's a sea shanty. Yeah. Okay, I was, I, and, I was talking about, the song I was talking about was uh, uh, Seven Spanish yeah, Angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Seven Spanish Angels. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I used to use that one in my art classes. Uh, I would play that song and then have kids draw pictures to go with the song. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, it was kind of cool. They had never heard it, so. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's how that's what we get. Uh, he is out there just whistling away on his little patch of grass, and then of course by the next episode, his lawn will be fine. Yeah. So uh, this episode was particular. It was written by uh, the voice of Dale, Johnny Hardwick, and uh, oh, it was Paul Lieberstein. Yeah. So uh, Toby, Toby from the, the office. office. Yeah. So those are the two writers of this show. And I then, didn't realize uh, Dale wrote this one. That's great. Yeah, he wrote it, and then. I went and looked for the director's information, and the director actually has done uh, 
a few things. He did uh, Rugrats, The Simpsons, Rocco's Modern Life, Cat mm. Dog, Gary McCarver is his name. Oh, yeah. He did a little bit with American Dad, Simpsons Video Game, Simpsons Movie, directed, you know, King of the Hill. Uh, actually directed an episode of The Oblongs, too, if you know that one. Oh, the I Oblongs. do remember The Oblongs. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was short-lived, one. but yeah, yeah, I remember The Oblongs. I think they still run it in so syndication. So I would like to say uh, we are reaching out to Johnny Hardwick. Um, we would love to have you, Johnny. Um, we'd like to talk to you if at all possible, it would be a, it would be a real honor to be able to talk to you. Um, if by some chance somebody knows Johnny Hardwick or Johnny Hardwick, if you are listening to this, we would love to talk to you, please contact us us. or just respond to some of the contacts that we've made. That would be nice too. So I think that's it. Uh, the next episode will be season one, episode 12, which is the last one of the season, correct? Yep, that'll be it. That'll be the last one. That'll be the first season wrapped up, guys. And I also wanted to thank everybody for all the support and everything oh, on Instagram yeah. and everywhere else. Uh, I want to shout out Hank Trill again and yeah. thank him for coming on. Uh, we we hit 1K downloads because of y'all, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, a big yeah. milestone yeah. for us. You know, we're a short a goofy lived little podcast. show yeah not short lived yeah. we've only been around for a little yeah. while we're, yeah. we're a young podcast so this is episode well, 12 yeah and, and we just want to you know say thank you to everybody for all yeah, the support man we, we shout out to argentina <laughs> that's right shout out to argentina uh we we know you're listening hitler um so yeah we we um we would love to uh talk with any of you if you want to respond to us what's our what's our socials uh, Bois, K-O-T-H, B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H at Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. There you go. Uh, you can reach us on any of those. You can find us at roguemedianetwork.com. And uh, I guess until uh, episode 12, uh, Wimitanye. Wimitanye. All right, we'll see. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially golden age stuff oh golden age stuff is always the best and we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness of everything yeah that's right so subscribe today and uh, follow us on instagram at bros bros heroes and if you don't i know where you live not really but please subscribe (laughs) bros and bros and heroes Gonna tell you about pros and foes and heroes. Gonna tell you about. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story.